Hey everybody, my name is Nathaniel Dodson from tutvid.com. Welcome right into this Adobe Premiere Pro tutorial where we're going to be taking a look at video editing, getting started video editing in Adobe Premiere Pro in about 10 minutes. I'm not quite sure exactly how long it's going to take, so I'm going to say about 10 minutes. Now, if you do enjoy this tutorial, make sure you subscribe to the channel, turn those notifications on so you never miss another video editing, After Effects, Premiere Pro, you name it, video tutorial in the past, present, or future. Let's jump into Premiere right away and get this thing started. Alrighty, here we are, all fresh-faced and ready to rock and roll in Adobe Premiere Pro. Things are just heating up, so let's jump right into it. Number one, build a Premiere project. The first thing you're going to want to do when you first open up Premiere is create your very first project. Give the project a name, choose where we want to save this on our hard drive, and everything else here can be left at default. We now have, well, we now have our first project. Step number two, Time to import some footage. So importing footage into Premiere is as easy as just double clicking within this project panel right here or right clicking in there and choosing import and use this to import your video clips, your audio clips, maybe images and all kinds of different things. You could also open your finder window or your explorer window if you're using the Windows operating system. Find your video files and audio files and whatever. Drag those files over into Premiere and drop them all in the project panel. Number three, create your first sequence. So to actually begin editing, we need to be able to drop video out onto a timeline where we can begin editing. These timelines are part of what we call here in Premiere sequences. We need a new sequence. Now we can go file new sequence and create a new blank sequence, but in there we have to put in all kinds of complicated nonsense and junk. So the easiest way to do this is right click on a video clip you have there in your project bin and choose new sequence from clip. This will create a sequence and automatically drop that clip into that sequence on the timeline in a way that just works. It's so easy, it's great. Now you can find your new sequence in the project bin at the bottom. You can identify that it is in fact the sequence and not just another video clip by that little icon in the lower right corner. You also should be organized, so just slow double click the name and change it to something that makes a little sense. All right, number four, workspaces. So there are lots of cool tools and windows and all kinds of stuff all over the place in Premiere. So it's a good idea to spend a little time exploring the interface. And once you've set up a workspace that suits your needs by clicking and dragging panels and locking and popping them everywhere that you want them to go, go window, workspaces, save as new workspace, and give the workspace a name that you like, and it's that easy. Now, Adobe has a, a bunch of very useful workspaces that are default here in Premiere that you can check out. For instance, there's a color workspace that's great when you're color correcting or grading your video or film. The editing workspace, well, it's great for baseline video editing. The audio workspace, it's great for editing video while also having very easy access to lots of live monitoring of your audio levels, mix, and more. Now, here a quick tip. Often when I'm editing video where I might be talking, it's really, really helpful to see this audio waveform so you can visually see where talking starts and stops. Well, you can hold down your shift key and hover over the track title over here and just use your mouse wheel to scroll up or down and that's going to make your tracks appear larger or smaller. This can be super incredible helpful as you're editing. Moving right along, number five dragging in all sorts of different clips. So of course you'll need to be able to add multiple video clips, pieces of audio and, and more to your project. You can add multiple clips simply by just dragging them out of your project bin, moving them where you want on the timeline. Audio tracks go below the middle dividing line and video tracks go above it. It's pretty simple. Now here a quick tip. It's generally best to just target the audio and video tracks number one, the A1, V1 stuff going on here by clicking to make sure they're highlighted with blue. This keeps it simple when you're dragging in clips. I don't want to get into all the targeting stuff here, but if audio and video starts ending up all over the place, just check to make sure you have your baseline tracks targeted. And number six, adjusting audio level. So audio, when you're working on any kind of film, is arguably more important than the video itself, because with bad audio, beautiful visuals are just painful to watch. So I'm going to use the plus key to zoom in on my timeline. Now, one of the clips I dragged in is a music track that I want to mix underneath the speaking that I'm doing in this video. The problem is the music's just way too loud. So I'm going to select that audio object. Now, generally, you want to keep your max audio level around negative 6 dB over on this meter you've got here in Premiere. That's pretty standard for dialogue and broadcast television. Sometimes it goes as low as negative 12 dB, but you get the point. Negative 6 dB is a safe place to hang out. It's just a good place to put yourself and figure out if little things here and there need to be tweaked a little louder or not later on. I can just use this little line here in the middle of this audio object, drag it downward or even drag it upward to reduce or increase the volume of this clip. Now, I'm going to reduce this to round about negative 25 dBs from where it is right now. And then I can preview this audio track. You can also hit the little M to mute or unmute the track just to really hear what's going on. 
Now here, a quick side tip. You can also adjust the gain of a clip. Now, if you don't understand the difference between gain and volume, run a quick Google search. It's fairly simple, but it's something that's interesting and useful to know, especially here when you're dealing with both volume and gain. Now you can adjust the gain of a clip by right clicking on the audio clip and simply choose audio gain. Select the adjust gain by and go with you know, plus three decibels or minus three decibels and push it up, push it down, whatever your audio needs. You can really choose anything you want here. Okay, moving on from audio, number seven, trimming the edges of clips. Next, we're going to take a look at trimming some clips. I want to cut off the whole beginning of this clip where I'm just talking to myself and it's junk banter. The easiest way to do this is by using the selection tool, the black arrow, and hovering over the edge of my clip all the way on its leftmost edge. You're going to see this red arrow appear. Drag that arrow back to where the clip should begin. And I'm watching the audio when I do this because the audio obviously is where I start talking. Let go, and there I've trimmed the clip. I can use the same technique to make video reappear. So I can drag video back out that I've made go away as well. I can click this clip and just drag it right over to the beginning of my sequence as soon as I've sort of trimmed the front edge of that video clip. Okay, number eight, adding a simple fade transition or multiple fade transitions. So now that we've got a video clip trimmed and moved, let's fade it in from black. So we're going to open the effects panel by going window effects, and I'm going to run a search for cross. And I'm going to choose the video cross dissolve, and I'm going to drag it right there and drop it on the front of that clip. I will also drag a constant power audio crossfade effect by searching for constant power in the same effect panel right there and drop it onto the front of my audio clip and that will fade the audio in. In fact, I can drag it on all of my audio tracks here. One quick side point, you can zoom in on this by hitting the plus key. You're going to zoom in on your timeline and we can actually drag the edges of any of these transition effects and adjust how quickly they take place or we can extend them out over a long period of our video. So the, the fade in from black could take a really long period of time or it could happen very, very quickly. Number nine, using the razor tool and snapping clips together. So I'm going to look through this video right now and I'll find a couple of dead areas in the audio where maybe I paused or just areas that I want to tighten up. Maybe I took a break from talking and it's just a little bit longer than I want it to be. When I find one of these areas, I'll reach over and grab this razor tool and I'll cut the video and audio track right there. Now, we're only cutting the audio track of me speaking, not the music. We want the music to remain one perfect piece in the background, so don't select the music track. Now, once I've made two cuts, I can get rid of that little piece of footage by just selecting it and hitting the delete key. And then you'll want to make sure snapping is turned on. So just find that little magnet icon right there in the top left of your timeline a window here. Make sure it looks blue. Then you know snapping is on. And then simply drag this clip together and you'll feel them click right together. It's that easy. All right, so let's make a quick zoom cut. This is the 10th sort of little tip to getting started in Premiere. Let's do a simple bump in effect here. Uh, it can be a nice way to emphasize something that you've said or a moment in a scene, maybe for comedic effect, whatever it may be. Grab that razor tool again, and I'll cut before and after some short phrase that I want people to pay more attention to. And then I'm going to select the video clip we just cut, and then I'm going to go Window Effect Controls. Now here in the Effect Controls panel, I'll set the scale to 115%. This is going to give me just a nice zoom bump in. If we absolutely must, you can double click the clip in this main monitor window and move the clip around just to make sure your face or whatever the focal object in the shot, just to make sure that's still in view. All right, number 11. Let's talk about adding some text to your video because when you got to add text, well, you got to add text. We can add some text to to a video uh, or just create like a lower third title or something like that to identify maybe a person in the video. You can grab the text tool here in the vertical toolbar and simply click up in the video monitor area to begin adding text. We can go window essential graphics to open the essential graphics panel. It's pretty powerful and you should spend some time looking for tutorials on the essential graphics panel and learning all about it because it'll it'll really be something of use here in Premiere for you. Now in here you can change any settings you like for the text. Move the text around. I'm going to roll with the league Spartan. I'll go bold for the weight. I'm going to set the fill color to white and reduce the opacity of my text to like 10% so it's very see-through. Now, as a bonus, we can throw a fade in and out on this text object that is now appearing as a clip on our timeline. Look at that. We do this by dragging out a couple of crossfade effects for the video to the front and end of this text object. And you can drag this text up and down your timeline just like you would a normal video clip. Use that same trimming technique I, I used earlier. But because it's a text object, you can really extend the video. You can trim the video out, so to speak, as long as you want. It could be there for your entire video if you wanted. All right, we're coming down the home stretch here. Tip number 12, set in and out points to choose an area of export. This is kind of important. We can set what are called in and out points. And this is kind of a selection over our timeline that we can use for all sorts of different things. But in this particular instance, I'll be showing you how to use it to select the area of stuff that you want to export as your final finished presentable video. 
move to where you want your video actually to begin probably the very beginning of your sequence right and simply hit the letter I this is gonna set what's called an endpoint then move to where you want the video to end and then hit the letter O this will set an out point doesn't look like we did much but we're gonna use it in the next step when we export this thing and that brings us right along to the last final and 13th step here and that is exporting so speaking of exporting go file export media to bring up the export panel first make sure we're exporting the in and out range right down here you can choose from this drop down menu then I'm gonna choose the h.264 format then make sure you make use of the many presets that Premiere Pro has for us now well, this isn't a whole tutorial on exporting and the best codec and all kinds of complicated stuff so we'll keep it simple we'll go with a nice 1080p HD YouTube export and we can leave everything in its default settings and get a great 1080p HD video for YouTube by the way it also works great with Facebook and Twitter or Instagram anything as long as your video is gonna fit within the size and time limitations of whatever platform to which you are uploading it and that my friends is a quick and basic primer on how to get started editing video with Premiere Pro. Ah, and that's going to be it for this one, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Hope you learned a thing or two while you were at it. Make sure you go follow me on Instagram as well. My Instagram handle is at Tutvid. I'm always posting stuff over there, doing live shows, all kinds of fun stuff over there. Uh, so make sure you join, uh, join in with the group over there and have some fun with us. So for learning all about how to video edit, mix sound, do cuts, do all kinds of all kinds of things here in Adobe Premiere Pro, guys. For this one, that's it. Get it, got it, good. Nathaniel Dodson, Tutvid.com. I'll catch you in the next one. And before you go, make sure you subscribe to my channel for more great tutorials every day. Also, buy my course. It helps us do what we do, and this channel is supported by viewers just like you. You can also just click the thumbnail and watch another video from this channel. See you next time, guys.